In this experiment, we're going to do a simple float test to see if there has been an embryo that formed in our beans. Uh, this is a Burbank stringless green bean. It is a unique type of green bean that I was able to get through the USDA's germplasm repository that Luther introduced a long time ago that um, doesn't have any strings in the long green beans. And they're very, very delicious beans. Uh, but when I got them from the seed bank, they gave me 10 seeds. And of those 10 seeds, six of them germinated. Uh, and of the six, people kept absconding with my green beans until uh, I only got one pod that had six beans in it. Uh, so I saved those seeds and planted them the next year. Uh, when I, where I planted them, I kind of hid them from people. So I was able to collect enough seed to sow an entire 25-foot demonstration bed the following year. So I've gone from having six seeds to now having like a third or fourth season where I have so many green beans that I can plant them for myself and I can even offer some for sale. So I've taken a hundred that I've selected and I went through and I kind of picked through and chose ones that I thought would be good to begin with. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take this 100 seeds and we're going to sprinkle them in this Tupperware of water. Um, the idea being that the ones that have embryos in them will be dense enough to fall to the bottom and the ones that do not have embryos will stay floating on the surface. We're going to let this sit for about half an hour after we dump them in there and you'll get a little bit of camera magic where I just kind of turn off the camera and then I'll show back up a half an hour later. Uh, and then we are going to go one step further with this experiment and we're actually going to plant these seeds regardless of whether they floated or not. And we're going to keep track of which ones floated and which ones sunk and see if, we, if this is a direct proxy for um, determining viability of germination. Okay, so here we go. We're going to just sprinkle this 100 seeds and already I can see that, you know, we've got some that are sitting on the surface and some that are sinking. Uh, we want to let this sit for about half an hour so that the seed has a little bit of time to imbibe or take in water. Uh, so then after half an hour is up, we'll figure out how many of them have sunk, how many have floated. And I chose 100 because it's an easy round number. It makes the math super easy. All right, so we'll be back in about half an hour and we'll see how many of these seeds sunk and how many floated. Okay, it's been about a half an hour and I can see that I still have quite a few beans floating on the surface here. Um, so we wanna know if those are actually viable for, if our float test is, a, is an accurate assessment of seed germination viability or not. So we're gonna take these seeds and we're gonna sow them in, um, our seedling flat here. I'm going to put uh, one per each cell and we'll see, we'll give this a week or two and we'll see if they actually sprout and if that correlates to um, our sink and float test. Those two are stuck together. And okay, I'm just gonna scoop some more off the top here. Okay. Well, this entire flat is full of floaters, and so uh, that's 36 to start with. You usually like to bury seeds twice as deep as they are big, but next week we're going to do an experiment with um, some light requirements too that seeds have to germinate sometimes, and so the the seed size isn't going to necessarily correlate with um, with whether or not you need to have it buried below the surface or above the surface. Uh, beans don't really like to be handled too much, which is why I'm going to sew these in um, these six-pack trays 
instead of uh, sewing them like in a seedling flat and then transplanting. Next week we'll see some seedling flat sewing, which is usually what I do here uh, for most things. Uh, for big stuff, namely like beans and then also a lot of the squash, usually I, I sew those in either these giant six packs that have really big cells or I'll put them in um, four inch pots and then just direct sew from there. Some people really like to just plant them, you know, in place of where they're going to be. here and I'm just gonna go ahead and sew the rest of these uh, but I wanted to give you the number of how many actually sunk and how many floated so it looks like I've got two three more floaters in here and I've got five six seven eight in my hands two more We'll see what grows. I mean, it'd be nice if all of them did, but it probably isn't going to work out that way. Okay, so now I am done with the floaters, and I've got only sinkers left. Uh, it looks like I've got 36, 72, 78, 80. I have 80 plants, or 80 seeds that floated and 20 that sunk. Oh, here, look at this. I got another floater right here. Oh boy. Okay, so now we're going to go 81, 19. 81, 19. And those are going to be the numbers that you're going to need for your lab notebook. Okay, so uh, then in our observations in the coming weeks, we'll keep an eye on these seedling flats and we'll just see what grows uh, from our Burbank beans.